Hello, everyone. Good morning, and thank you for joining us on another episode of the Coffee with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Stafford, and today I have Kelly Campbell. Kelly is a conscious leadership coach, helping creative and technology leaders transform both their lives and their agencies. We'll go into that in a bit. She is the co-founder of Consciousness Leaders, a global collective of experts helping organizations create positive, lasting change. Kelly is also the host of the Thrive Podcast, a tremendous agency resource, and she's currently authoring her first book. Kelly, welcome to the podcast. Kevin, thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here. Let's begin at the beginning. What brought you into coaching? What prompted you to start a coaching practice, coaching business? So I had sold my digital marketing agency, a cause marketing agency in 2016. And as a 36 year old unemployed CEO, (laughs) I, I naturally kind of went into consulting and coaching. I would say consulting first for sure. And then sort of through the process of consulting and realizing that I needed to go a little bit deeper with the clients that naturally led into translating that into coaching. And that's, I would say what I'm doing almost exclusively. I will take on like one consulting client per year uh, if it makes sense, but yeah, predominantly coaching at this point, you know, agency leaders and sort of working at the nexus of conscious leadership and agency growth. Mm -hmm. Actually, that leads me very nicely to the next question. What would you say that you're doing in your coaching business that is unique or different from a lot of the other coaches? We talked a little bit about this before I hit record, but I love so much what you had to say. I'd love to hear you say it again. (laughs) Yeah. So when I started coaching, I looked at, well, who is in this space? You know, these are all people who would consider themselves maybe agency growth consultants or agency transformation coaches. There was lots of verbiage around that. And what I noticed was that all of them were focused on the profitability, the scalability, the structure, the operations. And over the course of my consulting work, I realized there's a huge gap that no one is talking about and that really needs to be talked about. And that is the human side of the leaders themselves, of the owners, the founders. And so, you know, listen, we, none of us had perfect childhoods, right? We all, we all experienced some type of traumatic experiences or had something that shaped us over the course of our developmental years. And so if we don't actually address those things, then we bring those, those behaviors and uh, coping mechanisms and unhealed trauma into our leadership style. And so if we don't address those, then there is actually some kind of limit. There's, a, there's something that we don't necessarily achieve. I don't love the word achievement, but there, there are measures of success, let's say, that we can self-define that we may never hit if we don't address those things. That's well said. I, I, I too have a bit of an allergy to that word achievement just because it's incomplete. It doesn't tell the whole story. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Let's see. What, what would you say the biggest challenge that you face as a coach is? Um, whether that be in the, the, the act of coaching itself, uh, the business itself. So I don't, I don't know. I think I'm a, in a pretty, in a priv- pretty privileged seat, you know, from a business development standpoint, from attracting ideal clients because of that strong positioning. I don't have a lot of challenges in terms of running the coaching business. What I would say is, you know, probably what most individual coaches would say is that my real challenge is capacity. I'm not willing to do what most other coaches do or many other coaches do, which is to create some sort of DIY online programs or courses or things that people could download or It just doesn't feel aligned for me. And for me, it's about the one-on-one relationship. I don't feel like I could translate the work that I do into something like that. And quite honestly, just having that that type of recurring revenue stream doesn't actually make sense for me. And I am the biggest fan of recurring revenue, trust (laughs) me, and diversification of revenue. I mean, it's what I coach my agency clients on. But for me, it's really the one-on-one relationships with the, the agency leaders or the agency leadership teams. So I would say capacity. I mean, I really, I went from trying to deal with like five clients at a time to 12 clients at a time. And I realized that, you know, there's a middle ground somewhere in between there. And it really depends on the type of work, like the specifics that I'm doing with each of the clients. But in general, I can probably take on nine or 10 clients simultaneously. And that's it. Like I hit that wall. And so they just have to wait, you know, prospective clients just have to wait. So I think that's probably the biggest challenge is the capacity issue. It seems like you've, you've met and have made a, a peaceful agreement with your greatest challenge in that you've realized that 
there's an ad that at one-to-one aspect of coaching is the most important aspect for you and that you are not willing to compromise that just for additional revenue streams yeah. and that you've, and you sort of like have achieved this sort of <clears throat> this balance, this agreement there where you're like, I know what my capacity is. I know what it's like when I meet it. I know what happens when I exceed it too far and how that hurts the one-to-one relationships you have with your, like you said, nine or 10 active mm-hmm. clients. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I feel like that's going to be a challenge again is, is an imperfect word because it doesn't tell the whole story. It's almost like a, a force that you push up against and have found a balance with. And I would call it maybe you, a growth edge. Ooh, growth edge. I, I like that phrase a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. It. And and that's what it is. It's kind of like I went on either side of the spectrum and kind of, uh, or either side of the pendulum and let it swing and kind of like land in the middle. And like nine or 10 feels good to me. Right now I have one very large consulting engagement, which is the one per year that I'll take. And so that means that I can't take on, you know, more than, seven or eight coaching clients simultaneously. So any new prospective clients that are coming in, I'm saying, all right, well, I'm scheduling out to, as a start date, 45, 60, even 90 days out. And if they're willing to wait, then that's fine. And sometimes they are, and sometimes they're not. And when they're not, I can refer them to other colleagues in the space. Man, it sounds great. <laughs> Find, finding that sweet spot. And again, I think sweet spot is that's what I think about, like that that crack of a bat when it just hits a, hits a baseball just right. It just sounds, the way you describe it, it sounds... I don't want to say perfect because I don't like that word either. Keep bumping into words we don't like, but it just sounds, it sounds sweet, genuinely sweet. Yeah. Before we go, I do want to just ask if you wanted to talk a tiny bit about this book that you have coming out. I don't know if that's something that's coming soon or if that's just sort of in progress as you other things take priority or where that's at. So I'd love yeah. to talk about that a little Thank bit. you. Thank you for asking that. I, I don't talk about it that often because I'm about two thirds of the way finished with writing it just at the pro- in the process of doing publisher proposals with my book mm-hmm. consultant. And so realistically, it'll probably be out sometime in 2023, whether that's mid to late 2023. So we're, we're a ways out, but it's really about redefining leadership from the standpoint of it being a healing journey. And this is kind of what I was talking about before with the sort of trauma informed coaching and mm-hmm. all of the work that I've, you know, sort of have been again, privileged to go on this journey with my clients. And then I also bring in a lot of my own personal experiences from life and owning the agency and and all of these things. And so I do actually talk a lot about my own, you know, childhood traumas and, and things like that and how all of those experiences led me to become a leader and then a more conscious leader and then now a coach and, and all of those things. So yeah, it's, it's a little, it's part memoir, part, business book, part self-help, self-help. I don't know where, where it's going to land on a bookshelf, um, but that's not my job to figure out. That's the publisher's shop. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I know two years seems like a long, a long way away, but I got to say the last, the last two years have gone by pretty quickly for reasons that we don't have to get into today. Mm-hmm. It is an important lesson to remember that time does fly. Uh, so it'll be 2023 right around the corner. I won't think about that too much today as I <laughs> try to stay in the moment. Um, but I'm looking forward to your book and I'm excited to hear more about it. Um, I'll keep an eye on your website, which is klcampbell.com. Very good. Kelly, thank you for being with me, talking with me today, for being with us today. Thanks to the audience for listening and we will see you all next time or hear you all next time.